The statement of the Schwartz lemma is the following. Let f be a holomorphic map from the unit disk into the complex plane, such that for every point z in the disk, the absolute value of its image is less than or equal to 1. We have that the origin in the unit disk is mapped to the origin. And if these two conditions are satisfied, then we know that the absolute value of f of z is bounded by the absolute value of z. Okay, so there's a lot going on in the statement of this, so let's just flesh out each part. So recall that a smooth function f from, let's say, the unit disk into c is holomorphic if d bar of f happens to vanish. So if we take the complex conjugate derivative, so the derivative of f with respect to z bar, then f is holomorphic if and only if this vanishes. Now if you write f as u plus iv, where u and v are the real and imaginary parts respectively, then d bar of f vanishing is equivalent to the Cauchy-Riemann equations partial u partial x is partial v partial y, and partial v partial x is minus partial u partial y. So the notion of a function being holomorphic is in essence the notion of a function being complex differentiable. Now if we look at this first condition, namely that the absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to 1 for all z in the unit disk, then that tells us that f maps the disk onto itself. So the image will be itself contained in the unit disk. Moreover, the conclusion of the Schwartz lemma, namely that the absolute value of f of z is bounded above by the absolute value of z, tells us that f is distance decreasing. Okay, so how do we prove it? Well, we'll consider the function g of z defined by f of z divided by z. Of course, this can't be defined at the origin, so we'll take this for all points in the unit disk except the origin. Now if we set g of 0 equal to f prime of 0, then this gives us a holomorphic extension of g to the entire disk, noticing that f of z over z will converge to the derivative of f at 0. So this will in fact define a holomorphic map from the disk into the complex plane. Now we'll fix some z0 in the unit disk, and we'll choose r such that r is greater than the absolute value of z0, but is less than 1. Now by the maximum principle that we saw before, since g is holomorphic, g of z0 is less than or equal to the maximum of the absolute value of g of z, where the maximum occurs on the boundary of this neighborhood. The maximum is not over mod z less than or equal to r, but over mod z equal to r. Now if we write out the definition of g, we have the maximum of f of z over z over the set of z such that mod z is equal to r. And of course, this is less than or equal to 1 over r. Now as we let r tend towards 1, what we see is that 1 over r tends to 1 as well. That tells us therefore that the absolute value of g of z0 is less than or equal to 1. And in particular, f of z0 is less than or equal to z0 in absolute value. Since this z0 was chosen arbitrarily, this tells us exactly what we want, so long as z0 is not 0. If z0 does happen to be 0, then the statement is obvious and there's nothing to prove.